Today, I want to talk to you about all in faith. Now, we've heard the term of stepping out in faith and having faith, but what does it actually mean to be all in with faith? You know, whenever we say we're all in, it shows that we're putting all of our trust, all of our belief, everything inside of us that we believe in, and we're going to trust the Lord. You know, all in faith is giving your all, taking a leap of faith, stepping out, though you can't see the end results. That's what faith is. But what does it take to please God? If you say a certain amount of prayers, amount of rituals, that's not the case. Because the Bible says in order to please God, that we are required to have faith. You see, some people think if you keep a certain religion that God's going to let you in. That, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about relationship. That's faith. You know, in this Christian life, relationship with the Lord is going to require faith. The Bible says that it's impossible to please God unless you have one thing. What is that? It's faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, And without faith, it's impossible to please Him. For whatever would draw near to God must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who seek Him. You have to trust God with everything in your life, your finances, your children. You know, it takes faith to, to believe that once you drop your children off that school, they're going to be good. They're going to be okay. They're going to be protected. This Christian lifestyle that you're living in, that though you're reading daily, it's a faith walk, though you might go through trials and testings and bombarding in your mind, it's a faith walk. Believing in God and knowing that you're going to be unmovable, you're going to be unshakable, that regardless of what comes your way, you're standing in faith and you're all in to please the Lord. Faith is not just one thing, but there are actually six different types of faith. And we'll get into it in just a moment. So what is faith? Faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, as I mentioned in the scriptures, Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is having confidence and insurance, not what you hope or think. Okay? Number one is all in faith is believing when I don't see it. Faith is visualizing what's before you, the future, even though you can't see it. It's a confidence that you have and you believe in your heart that you're going to achieve it, though you don't know how far it is or though you don't know when you're going to receive it. You just know in confidence that by faith you're going to obtain it. As human beings, we often say, I'll believe it if I see it, or I'll take a step out of faith if I see just a little bit of the picture of what God has for me. Well, that's the opposite of faith. Because the Bible says here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, as we read, it says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God. You see, in the secular world, faith is used all the time. When an artist is creating a painting or a man is has an eye on a certain girl, they're believing that it's for them. They're believing that that's for them. They're believing that what they're seeing is attracted to them, and that's what they want. You know, uh, the secular man that, that likes that girl is going to believe. He's going to see maybe visions in his mind or thoughts in his mind of him holding her hand. He's going to, whatever it takes, I know she's mine. You know, especially uh, Christians that, you know, um, they want to marry right away. They, they have the faith that they're going to believe for that spouse, and they're going to get married and have, uh, have, a, have a wedding, and uh, God is going to bless that marriage just by faith. So since, you know, even people in the secular world, they have faith, but how much more should a child of God believe and have faith in God? We should have greater faith. Number two, all in faith is obeying when we don't understand it. Listen, everything that you may face or when God calls you to it, we may not, we may not always understand. If we always understood everything, then you know, maybe it may not require faith, but sometimes we're not always going to understand it. You know, there was a man in the Bible named Noah. 
all the doubt he might have had in his mind, he probably thought that he really heard from God and people are mocking him and people are shaming him and saying, look at this man, look what he's doing. But he had faith. And he knew that he heard from God. But imagine the doubts that he dealt with. Imagine uh, the fears that if this didn't happen. The Bible says, you know, by faith, Noah built an ark. He did it by faith and he believed that he heard the Lord. So he stepped out in faith and said, I'm going to build the ark. Faith is believing when it doesn't even make sense. You ever... uh, Hear God tell you to do something that just doesn't make sense at all? You know, there was one time where, uh, if I could share a story with you, I was getting ready to go to work, and this time I, I wasn't driving yet. I was just taking the bus. And I remember I used to go a certain route all the time. But I remember getting to the bus stop, and the Lord speaking to me, He said, I want you to cross the street and take the opposite bus. And I said, God, if I take the opposite bus, it's going to detour me around and I'm going to get to my job maybe later. Like, it, it just wouldn't make sense. And, you know, me as a believer, as a Christian, I just know. I said, let me just let me just believe the word that God is telling me. Step out in faith and, and let me just react to it. I remember crossing the street, seeing a man that was there. Uh, he was homeless, but he was nicely groomed and nicely well kept. And I began to talk to him and, and begin to talk to him about the Lord just seeing if he had faith and if he was saved and just having conversation. Comes out, you know, that this guy was homeless and uh, he was actually just sitting there and just letting the time go by and just getting his day started. So as I'm talking to him, I begin to talk to him about the Lord and begin to share with him about the goodness of God. And I begin to ask him if he was saved. I began to ask him if he accepted the Lord in his heart, and he had said that he didn't. And I said, well, what's stopping you? And it was incredible to hear this man's response because, you know, a lot of times people would say things like, well, I'm not ready, or they'll say things like, I got to stop doing this before I can give my life to God. But this particular man kind of blew me away because uh, just his response. His response was, I'm not worthy to, to serve God. I'm not worthy or perfect enough to to serve him, and I don't think he'd ever receive me. My heart was moved with such compassion when I heard that. And scripture started flying to me, and I began to minister to him and tell him what the Bible had said, that, that all of us are sinners, but we're saved by grace, and that's through faith. And that all of our sins before the Lord, they're like filthy rags. So nobody's worthy, nobody's perfect and i said this is why we serve jesus this is why we serve the lord is because one we can't do it on our own two we can't save ourselves, and three we need a savior and jesus died for our sin so i remember praying with this man and uh just you know telling him about the goodness of god but still he, he wasn't ready yet he said well maybe i gotta think about it and i said okay no worries and I said, can I pray for you? Now, I noticed this man, he had, uh, he was well cleaned and groomed. He was missing a few teeth and uh, hair was, was kind of long, but it was, you know, groomed. And he had uh, just a cart with maybe one backpack in it. And I began to ask him, I said, can I pray for you that, that God will bless you? And he, he was like, yeah, sure, uh, I guess so. And I said, I, and one thing I told him is when I pray for people, I believe in faith. I have the faith that when I pray that God hears my prayer and that God will meet the need for that person. It's just the confidence that I have when I pray, having faith. The guy said, sure. And I said, hopefully I get to see you again soon. And I said, remember, Jesus loves you and he has a plan for your life. And so he said, thank you so much. The bus came. I got on the bus. I ended up making it to work and I was on time. It was just crazy how, how just God knows all things. Uh, I guess the bus wasn't delayed and uh, switched routes for that day. And I ended up getting to work as if, I, you know, normal time as I usually would. So God knows all things. I remember going back to the story. I, I remember a couple of days later walking down the same hill that I was going to the bus stop, uh, my regular route uh, for work. But this time it was at nighttime. I see this homeless man, uh, you know, some homeless man 
approaching me with a basket full of duffel bags and food and all kinds of stuff. And I didn't pay any attention to him, but I noticed it was the man that I spoken to two days before, before I went on the bus for work. He stopped me and he said, brother, brother, he had tears in his eyes. And I said, what's going on? And he began to weep uncontrollably and reminded me of a child, you know, when they get hurt and they're just sobbing, they're weeping uncontrollably and they're trying to calm them down to, to kind of get what's going on out of their mouth. And so this guy, he's, he's weeping, he's crying and he's saying, you just don't understand. I don't understand it. God is so good. I said, what's going on? Please, like, are you okay? What's happening? I was, I was really concerned for him. He said, after you prayed for me, I walked behind a building. It was a 7-Eleven. There's a dentist back there, and they said that there was some dentist that came out, and they said that they saw him and that there was a day of giving back to the community. And so they said that he was the first person that they spotted and that he was one of them that they selected randomly. And they said, you know what? We're going to bless you today. We're going to help you out. Can I tell you something? This, as I mentioned uh, earlier in the story, that this man, he had a few teeth that were missing. The dentist gave him four free teeth, completed a full set of teeth for him for free. They said, we believe in giving back and we believe in blessing others because we've also been blessed. They gave him duffel bags of clothes the size that, that he wears. They gave him gift cards to buy out to food in grocery stores. Talk about the grace and favor of God that came upon this man. It was faith that I prayed for him that God was going to meet the miracle. And I believed it. And this man got blessed. You know, after I got done talking to him, he said it in his mouth. And he said, wow, God is real. He took care of me. Look at everything he gave to me. He gave me clothes. He gave me food. He even fixed my teeth. This man was life changed by what had happened. It was by faith as I st st uh, took a step out and prayed for him. And we saw the result. I, rem I reminded him of what he had said that uh, he was thinking about accepting Christ. I reminded him a day, uh, that day again and I said, remember I asked you if you would like to accept him and you said you had to think about it. Well, that time is now. Did you have time to think about it? I want to extend an invitation and let you know that Jesus is waiting for you. And, and by faith, he said, yes, brother, I'm ready. He accepted the Lord in his heart. And it, it was a, a divine appointment that God had led me to that bus stop, one, to plant a seed, and secondly, that God favored him and blessed him, and then after that, he received salvation. Faith is obeying God, even when it doesn't make sense. I didn't understand why God wanted me to cross the street and take the opposite route on a bus. I'm thinking, God, if I go this way, it, I'm, I'm going to you know, miss my, my, my appointment at, at my work, you know, I'm, I'm going to be late and it's just going to be bad. But we have to remember that God's ways, they're perfect. God's ways, his ways are not our ways. His mindset is not our mindset. The way that he thinks is not the way that we think. So faith is obeying God. We have to obey him, even though it doesn't make sense. Obey God. Obey God out of revelation and not by reason. What you don't learn from instructions, you'll learn from experience. You know, I've learned to, to listen to the Lord one time because there was one time where, where I heard the Lord speak to me and I didn't listen and, and just things didn't fall in, in place the way they were supposed to. So that's why whenever the Lord speaks and it says, hey, I want you to do this, I listen because I know, hey, you know what, what can go wrong? God, God is my source. God is my Savior. He plans my ways and everything, so might as well just trust Him. Faith is giving even though we don't have it. There's always going to be a time where God will always test you to see if you're going to trust Him of what you have or if you're going to trust in Him. Because God is our source. Sometimes we say, God, you're my source. God, Jehovah Jireh, you're my provider. And sometimes we say these things. And now we believe it. But during the time of, you know, uh, 
stretching, I would say, we kind of tend, tend to hold back a little bit and get a little spiritual and be like, ah, oh, let me just pray about it. Let me let me let me hold off a little bit and just kind of wait to see if if this is what God wants for me. We we kind of get a little religious, but faith is giving when we don't have it, and that doesn't necessarily have to mean, uh, you know, giving finances. Though finances is one of them. Giving can be your time. Giving can be taking a step out and saying, you know what, I'm, I'm going to go out and I'm, I'm going to evangelize today. I'm going to go to a store nearby me and pass out some tracts and tell somebody about Jesus and give them hope. Uh, you know, uh, I'm going to share this. Uh, a, a good good friend of mine, uh, uh, we're discipling him. Uh, he goes to our, our church. A good, 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 awesome man. His name is Nigel. Hope, hopefully he doesn't mind me sharing this. But it really blessed me. I was talking to him the other day, and he said that uh, he was working and he was dropping off a package. Uh, I guess he was uh, delivering a package, and he said that he saw a, a old person that he knew. He, he knew a person from the past. Uh, it was his coach from high school, and he said that uh, he noticed him and he's like, "Hey, so and so, your coach." And the guy remembered his name. Goes, "Yeah, I remember you." And uh, you know, my friend was kind of in a rush and he was like, okay, well, you, you have a great day, kind of left. But he said that when he went back to his work truck, he said he felt convicted and he felt the leading of the Holy Spirit prompt him to go and, and talk to him. You know, the faith is given when you don't have it. God, I'm on a time limit. You know, I'm working, but uh, I got to go. But this young this young man, he, he felt in his spirit, in his heart, God is leading me to go talk to him. So my friend Nigel goes back and he says, hey, how are you doing? And begins to just talk to him. And he said that the man began to uh, kind of open up and begin to share what was going on. And that his eyes became watery and, and just, it was, it was almost as if he needed somebody to talk to, somebody to just unload and just vent to. And... I love the response that, that my friend gave him. He said, let's just pray about it. And it, it shocked the man. Like, wait, wait, what? Like, oh, I've never heard of this. And and the fact that just that alone, taking the time to come back and to check on somebody and be like, you know what? I'm going to pray for you. You know, I was, telling, I was telling my friend, I said, you never know if you save that man's life that day. You never know if if what you did by going back just to to kind of check on him and, and kind of see where he's at, because showing concern, you never know what, what that could have done to, to just change his life. Is you gave up your time to witness to somebody, and the end result was they felt a peace, they felt a burden begin to lift. Faith is giving when you don't have it. You know, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4, Abel offered a better sacrifice than Cain. You know, Abel had faith, Cain did not. Cain gave what he wanted, not what was required from him. When you give by reason, you give by fear. When you give by revelation, you're giving by faith. It's so easy to live off of what we know how to give instead of what is required from us. Imagine the impact in lives that you can touch if you was just to step out in faith and give without restriction. To give without overthinking. Think about that. Faith is trusting God even if I don't get it. That's a big one. Having faith in God. You ever have faith in God and you're believing for a job? Having faith and believing for that car? And you're saying, God, I have faith that you're going to do it. I have faith that you're going to move mountains. I have faith that you're going you're gonna, to uh, touch this person's life. But what happens when God doesn't do it? Do you still have the faith? We have to have faith and believe that no matter what happens, that we're still going to trust God, even if we don't get it. 
there's going to be some disappointments in your life. Not all the time is, is God going to meet that requirement. There's going to be times where you're going to hurt and say, man, God, I really wanted this. There was a time where I really wanted a job, and I said, man, I, I went to that job interview. Oh, man, that job interview went very, very well. They said they loved me. We connected so well. They said they were going to give me a call. Never got a call back. And I thought, oh my goodness, God, what happened? I felt faith in that. I felt the stirring of that. We were, there was connection. But God had to trust me. God, God had to remind me that I have to trust Him regardless on how everything unfolds. We have to remember that God is the one that orchestrates our steps. That God is the one that will stretch us sometimes, even in our faith. But you cannot become weary. You have to remind yourself that I'm all in and that regardless of what I'm facing, regardless of what I'm going through, I'm going to rely on God. Your faith is going to be tested. And when it's tested, you have to grow from it. Now there's going to be times where you're feeling stretched. Like, God, what do I do? But it's in those moments where you have to pray. Remind, remind yourself of the commitment that you made for the Lord. God, I'm all in. I'm not going to be shaken. There's been discouraging moments in my life where I'm believing, God, you said that you're going to turn this thing around and said it went south. I think of the apostles that the Lord appointed, how the Lord had called many into the highways and to the byways and told them to preach the gospel. And how the Lord told them to have faith and despite on what it looks like that God would take care of them because the Lord was their provider. I think about how the Lord would tell the, the, His disciples and His apostles, go out to the highways and the byways. Don't take any sandals with you. I know that your, your, your sandals, the straps might rip or they might break, but don't take extra sandals with you. He'll go on and say, don't take extra money with you. I know uh, it might be a little hard, but I'm, I'm stretching your faith, but you're going to make it. He'll say things like, don't take extra clothes because I know even though your clothes might get dirty, even though you might be walking for a long time, you might need some, some clothes because you might sweat through it. But don't worry, you'll, you'll get some extra clothes later on. And he goes on to even saying, don't take extra food with you. He goes, I know you might be hungry. I know you might have to fast a little bit, but you're going to be taken care of. He even goes on to say, don't worry about where you're going to sleep or where you're going to live. He said a good Samaritan will come and they'll place you in a place and they'll take care of you. They'll feed you. They'll cover you because I sent them. Now, God will, will send you and tell you these things. Hey, I want you to go to the highways and the byways. I want you to do this. I want you to do that. But he'll never give you the full details because sometimes if he gives us the full details, we'll take a step back and say, oh, I don't know, God. I, I, I don't know if I can do this. If we could be real. A lot of us, including myself, because I'm, I'm the first one to be to, to, to be so transparent and be like, uh, I don't know, God. I might have to wrestle with God a little bit, but eventually, you know, uh, I'll do it. But your faith is going to be tested. Your faith is going to be stretched at times. But in all of what you're doing, you have to grow from it. How do you grow from it? You grow by simply going through it. Oh, I, I need to say that one again. Your faith will grow by you going through it. I understand that it's unbearable. I understand that sometimes it doesn't feel good. But if you want to grow in your life with Christ and you want to grow in faith, you have to go, you have to go through it. If you never go through anything that's going to build your faith, your faith will always be weak. I heard a great friend of mine, a good preacher, once say, he said, if what you're doing doesn't scare you, it's not faith. My goodness. I remember the moment I heard that, I said, my goodness, Jesus, help me, Lord. There was a time where, you guys remember, where we were saving up money to plan for our conference, the Breaking Chains Conference. We had to raise about, I believe it was like twenty to $30,000. Now, I've never had did anything like this before. All I remember was getting a vision, seeing the keynote speakers who were going to be there, 
who was going to be there, how the music was going to be, who was in, in charge of the worship. That's all I knew. And all I had faith was God was going to provide and God was going to make a way. I remember being in church and my faith was being tested. It came to the time of giving. And I remember the Lord speaking and saying to give. And I said, oh man, God, you want me to give that? And this was a time where our church was was being built because there was construction going on. We, we wanted to remodel and, and you know, kind of make, re, redo some things in the church to make it look nice. And so uh, I was like, okay, God, I'll give my tithes. I give my tithes. God says, okay, what about the offering? I said, oh, God, or, I'll, I'll give $5 in the offering. There, there's my offering. And, and then I heard the Lord speak to me. He said, what about your church? And I said, oh, what about the church, God? And he said, well, you're part of the church. He said, build the church. And I heard the Lord said, he said, if you take care of my church, I'll take care. Of, he said, if you take care of my church and my home, my house, I'll take care of yours. And I'm thinking, okay, God, uh, how much do you want me to give? And the Lord stretching me by faith, knowing that we're still raising money for, for our conference, knowing that I don't even have it. I said, okay, God, we're going to give it. I remember giving my tithes, the offering, even uh, towards the, the, the building fund. And I said, okay, God, I don't have enough for it anyways. So I trust you. There was times where uh, I didn't have enough for, for food in our home. And I would literally look over to my wife and said, I got to give. We got to be faithful. We would give it. I would look over and I said, I don't know how we're going to eat tonight. But by the grace of God and by faith, as we stood and st uh, stepped out in faith and gave, God always met the need. You know, after I, I, I sold and, and gave to the building fund and my tithes and my offering and being faithful, somebody in our church came up to me and said, I believe what you're doing. And God put this on me and my wife's heart to give to you. And I remember they had sold about uh, a good amount, it was about $800 into the vision for this, this church event that we're doing. And I'm thinking, oh my goodness. And I'm thinking in my mind, man, this is a stretch, God. I don't know how this is going to do it. And God sent people that were so close to us, put on their heart to even want to bless us. That is faith. For the Breaking Chains Conference, God took care of it all. We're able to pay the ministers and be able to go through and have worship and have, it was just amazing. But God did it. My faith had to be stretched before I can see the end result. So I want to encourage you and say this again. Your faith is going to be tested. And when it's tested, you will grow from it. I say all of that to say this. Do not stop growing. Have faith in the Lord, yes, but give your all and you will see. Not only your faith begin to expand, but you will begin to see God move in your life in such a mighty way that would even shock you. I want to pray now for those who are watching. I want to pray that your faith is strengthened and that God will even begin to encourage you to step out in faith and that God will even stretch your faith. So let's pray right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for that one that is watching. Lord, I pray that you will strengthen their faith. I pray, God, that you would pour into them. And Lord, I pray that they would grow and that they will learn to trust you. In Jesus' name. If you believe it, say amen. If this message has blessed you and you would like to become a monthly ministry supporter or even check out more information about our ministry, go to SergioSanchezMinistries.com. God bless you and thank you for watching.